Hello and welcome to World Insight with me, Tianwei. Ninety Legislative Council members of China's Hong Kong Special Administrative Region were announced last Monday. That's after the first legislative election under the new Hong Kong SAR electoral system, based on the principle of patriots administering Hong Kong. Chief Executive of Hong Kong Carrie Lam said Hong Kong SAR government hopes to work together with the new legislature for Hong Kong's economic recovery and to integrate the region into the nation's overall development. So, what lies ahead for Hong Kong SAR's new revamped Patriotic Legislative Council? And what about some of the key issues that Hong Kong is facing today, such as the real estate issue and the housing for the public? On those questions, I spoke to Hong Kong SAR legislative member Regina Ip Lao Su Yi. Do listen in. Regina, what a pleasure to see you once again. Congratulations for being elected once again as the member of the Legislative Council. Thank you very much for your congratulations. I greatly enjoy the electoral process. Mm. I know you are having very busy schedule these days because you have a lot of people to express your appreciations for during your campaign,、uh, for their support, and I also know that you have a lot of work that you have to roll up your sleeves and get back to work immediately. Tell me more about what do you have in mind as this、uh, council's uh, member? Um, I think the under the improved. Uh, electoral system, our new council will be more broadly representative. You know, we have three components. I'm from the geographical constituencies. We are people most closely in touch with public opinion. Then we have functional representatives who will keep us in touch with the views of the professions or industries. Then the election committee. I think we managed to bring into council a broad. Cross section of、uh, representatives, some from、um, you know grassroots organisations, some from、uh, top management, senior professionals in finance, law, you know, technology. I think they will、yeah. help enrich the talent pool of the Legislative Council. Sound very exciting. You are well known for being able to speak out. And talk about what's on your mind, straightforward and sharp.、Uh, now, though, the legislative council, the makeup of it, have been changing, mainly patriots governing Hong Kong. So,、uh, I wonder whether you will find more of the same kind among the new members. I think the principle of patriots governing Hong Kong is a no-brainer. You know. Which country will allow people hostile to to the nation to hold important positions of governance? You know, it goes without saying that all those who hold important positions in the legislature or the executive branch should be patriots. You know, people who support the constitutional system and bear allegiance to the country and to the SAR. You know, so I think that's a no-brainer. Um, but in spite of that,、uh, this、uh, underlying principle,、um, the new members, the ninety of us, are really from different sect strata of our society, and there are some many in. We have over fifty-three new members. Many of them are independents in the、mm-hmm. sense that they have no political affiliation, you know, and so、uh, the new council、uh, will be really multicolored. It won't be a monolithic block. You know, it will represent a diversity of views and backgrounds. As the chairwoman of the New People's Party, what do you have in mind when you get down to work? What is on the top of your agenda? What can you do for the people in Hong Kong? We must solve the problem of land and housing shortage.、Uh, during my eight-week campaign on the street,、uh, what stuck in my mind is what an elderly person told me. You know, he lives in a public housing estate, a retired civil servant. He said that our government owes our young people a home. You know, our homes are not affordable for not only you know 
young people, even for established middle class, our homes are becoming smaller and smaller, not affordable. We have 200,000 people living in abject conditions in subdivided cubicles. We must tackle housing as a first priority, apart from our constitutional duty of uh, enacting local legislation to implement Article 23 of the Basic Law. The most important livelihood issue is really housing. Mm. Housing is a big issue in Hong Kong. However, we have seen over the past few administrations of Hong Kong SAR, that problem has not been solved. Some even argue the problem is getting ever more challenging. Now, um, Regina, it is no secret that you want to tackle the most difficult question. And yet, what do you have on hand? Uh, there are very complicated power structures and wealth structures regarding uh, providing uh, the land uh, for people with public housing. Tell me more about what you can do. To solve the housing problem, you need to speed up land production, greatly increase and speed up land production. And we need to really shake off past uh, fetters. You know, we can develop green belt. Uh, the, uh, the government, the chief executive has set up a working group to study how to release the Zhou and Tong, that is ancestral lands, you know. And um, we need to speed up the development procedures. I think we really, really need to discard a lot of the outdated, you know, uh, lengthy consultation um, um, drawbacks, you know, like uh, no reclamation in, in uh, Victoria Harbor, that sort of thing. A lot of them, the procedures are outdated. You, we need to do a lot to speed up development procedures and greatly increase land production, speed up all that. I think the Northern Metropolis Development Plan is a great opportunity for Hong Kong. Mm. Efficiency is very crucial. Hong Kong has been bogged down by debates. Some are useful debates, some are waste of time. So Regina, about the housing issue, how likely that is going to be done with efficiency by this generation of legislative council members together with the administration? There is consensus in LegCo about the severity of the housing problem. You know, um, in fact, even in 2018, we passed a motion to regulate the rental increase of subdivided cubicles, and the government adopted our proposal, and we enacted legislation before the end of the sixth term. So I think we will continue to press ahead and press the government to overhaul outdated procedures and to release new lands. For example, I have been advocating, for example, the container terminals, the throughput is going down. We ought to use some of the container lands on Kwai Chung, waterfront, you know, harborfront land for redevelopment. We can keep those, the, the newer, larger container terminals at Qingyi Island, but on Kwai Chung, we can release that land, you know. And um, there are lots of other things we can do. I think the, the government in the past have been um, too overwhelmed by the opposition. You know, the opposition has been too obstructive, you know, keeping, hampering the government from getting on with uh, land production. And we must break this bottleneck in the a new legislature. Mm. But, that it, but that could mean you're moving somebody's cheese. As we know, there's always obstruction as a result of that. So uh, I know there is new security law. I know there is a lot of changes going on in Hong Kong right now as a result of the, the um, support coming from the central government. But how far can the current administration and the legislative council members be able to push the envelope regarding that? Well, you know, there has been a lot of talk about property hegemony in Hong Kong. And they, I must say, the property tycoons um, could control, you know, people say easily two to 300 votes on the 1200 chief executive election committee. Now there has been a redistribution of power and votes, you know. The election committee ha has been expanded to 1500, five sectors, including many representing national interests, many representing constituencies who don't need to be beholden 
to the property sector. And we have a lot of Chinese enterprises uh, represented on the election committee. In fact, a lot of the property conglomerates, I know, they have all lost the votes. So the new chief executive, whoever that will be, will not need to be too uh, docked or beholden, you know, to, to the property sector. And I think they know, they know, they have been following, some of them have been studying um, um, our leadership's uh, comments on common prosperity, redistribution and all that. Some of them have been donating land uh, for use at new hostels or transitional housing. And uh, one property company is uh, uh, building middle-class homes at a discount. We need to have more of that. We need to encourage them uh, to have greater, to show greater support for the common good. And we need to do more re redistribution. The new administration, I cannot, I, I think cannot just follow the old doctrine of um, positive non-interventionism. You know, let markets decide we are free market the economy. We just sit on our hands, you know. The government really needs to step in and intervene more proactively where there is clear market failure. Mm. On the other hand, though, Hong Kong is well known for its market economy. It's well known for the invisible hands of the government, right? Uh, and it's well known for an investment environment that uh, international and uh, uh, investors coming from all over the world would love to join. Now, how to keep that very delicate balance? On the one hand, the welfare of the public will be taken care of. On the other hand, the investment and the business environment will not be violated as a result of some immediate goals of the government. So, uh, Regina, I'm sure that is a big question too. And you know, we have been repeatedly voted the world's freest economies by many international think tanks, you know. We will remain a market-driven economy, but, and we should regulate with a light hand. Government should only intervene where there is a market failure, you know. Um, that's what the, the, in the old days, pre the Hong Kong government did when, um, when there was not enough, the market was not producing cheap housing for um, um, victims of uh, fire, you know. So the government stepped in to build public housing estates, you know. So I think we, sh we can do both, keep uh, a vibrant market and step in where necessary. As we know, the... Uh Leg the administrative region is going to have the chief executive election also coming up, even though we still do not know the exact time. Now, Regina, how much do you think this issue will be examined in terms of who will have the capability and who will fulfill the promise if the promises are being made? If you look at the uh, policy manifesto of the major parties in the recent election, including ours, and look at that of DAB, the key message is change and reform. We need reform. We all know the administration, the executive branch has been stuck in the old ways for too long. We need new thinking. So the candidate who will get our votes must be someone who has new thinking and has, has the political determination to implement bold and innovative measures. Bold and innovative measures, uh, to you, what would that mean? Um, in resolving the land and housing problem, in um, promoting our integration with our country, winning yeah. hearts and minds, education reform, strengthen understanding of our country. Unfortunately, our education reform or implemented in 2009 uh, had gone wrong. That's why we have so many young people and teachers on the street engaged in violent acts in 2019. Uh, like in Taiwan, the curriculum, something was done to the curriculum to reduce the Chinese element. A lot of young people lost the opportunity to understand Chinese history, Chinese culture, and that eroded the sense of chi Chinese identity. We need to, you know, pull out all the stops through education, through culture, through other inf channels of influence, through leadership above all to win hearts and minds, and to implement reform. Regina Ip, always a pleasure.
Thank you so much.